Um, whoever once said uh, to poets, write what you know, I guess we all write what we know uh, to some extent or other. And I'm in that part of life where um, reluctantly in heels first, uh, I am um, urged by the people around me, well-meaning, loving people around me, to uh, update my trust, uh, get my advance directives in order, <laughs> um, uh, make sure my money will last until I die, um, uh, whatever all those um, things are. And it occurs to me that I am um, confronted on a daily basis by ageism, not in the least place of which is in myself. And that uh, the globe now has seven billion plus people on it, that if we continue to, uh, to procreate the way we have and to use up our resources the way we have, I don't know what two or three generations from me will have to fight over on this globe. Um, the issues of health care <coughs> that have made my life so wonderfully rich and capable at this age. I had a birthday yesterday. Oh, no. 88. Oh. Oh. Good for you. I feel very lucky to be in the shape I am at this age, and I know there are many, many, many people that are, and will be increasingly because of our medical care and, and scientific uh, uh, and public health issue, um, uh, advances. But there are issues that come up. There are issues that come up. Um, so the other day, it was really this summer, I was out in my garden, and on the way back in, I saw something on the doorstep of my house, uh, of my back uh, door, and um, I had an experience with an insect. This poem is called Last Try. It was in the fineness of his flailing which first caught my eye those barely noticeable motions, and then the fact that he was on his back, a position not, I guess, taken for sport that held my curiosity. Larger than bee, sorry, larger than fly, not bee, finer bodied than wasp, some winged six-legged cousin, clearly in distress, legs reaching sideways or akimbo, grabbing at the concrete surface under him, struggling to right himself. He slides in sideways circles on his back instead. Looking closer, I see his hind left leg dragging, not just useless to lift him in one direction or support him in the other, but now an obstacle. Just out of his reach lay a dry shred of leaf. Playing breeze, I move it closer to him, a casual life buoy meant to help him save himself. Though he struggles, it does not help him to his feet. Now on the inescapable path of rescue, I offer him more deliberately the shard of leaf. His long bent stick legs grab it. Together we write him. He is weak, unsteady on his five feet, and barely moves a hair or two along before stumbling to rest, his head not aloft, but bent to earth, his sixth leg dragging, his five others feeble, his wings without power. In slow motion, he drifts onto his side, still, but for the tiny jerking motions of his long jointed legs. 
I try to read his face, if he has one, and wonder if he seeks comfort or readies to die. I am now become hospice. <laughs> Watch him carefully for signs of life, now and then a gasp or shiver, minuscule movements. I imagine the tiny shutters are his life's last, and wonder if he hurts. And rue I have not the wherewithal to ease insect pain. My previously unattached curiosity is now confronted by my compassion. Merciful euthanasia comes to mind. I could do it quick and easy with the slightest stomp, but when is the right time? Seeking clues from his body language, I remain unsure. How can I tell what is best for him? How could I know his desire if he had one? Should I just let nature, as they say, take its course? Or should I put him out of his misery if it is that? I have become ineffably bound to him. This nameless, once-soaring insect wonder now tottering on the cusp. Hymnoptera and mammal, I am he, and he is me. In the timeless, shaky silence of uncertainty, together we face the mystery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.